Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico just giving y'all a where do we go from here as of today, Friday, free agency episode. I want to talk about how much salary cap we have left and what players are available out there, positions that we still need. Because, boy, these free agents flying off the shelves, bro. There's not that many left. And then after I come out with this video, I'm about to start analyzing how we can fill these holes through the draft. So the next video I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about how what are the best tight ends available in this upcoming draft since we still have a major need there and and there's not that many left out there. But this video is just strictly about free agency and salary cap. So let's get it. So after Kevin Pierre-Lewis becoming a $3 million cap hit, Wes Schweitzer becoming a $2.5 million cap hit, John Bostic hitting for about $2.3 million, JD McKissick hitting for about $1.6 million, those are the only people who have officially hit the cap. People like Thomas Davis, Logan Thomas, Cornelius Lucas don't count towards the cap yet. But as of right now, we have $35,356,079 worth of cap space. But like I said, Thomas Davis, Logan Thomas, and Cornelius Lucas don't count against the cap yet. So once they hit, we'll probably get somewhere in the lower 30 millions, upper 20 millions. So we don't have to really worry about the effect they'll have once they officially hit the cap. But let's say, for example, the Redskins have, at the very least, $27 million worth of cap space so far, moving forward. Even though right now, it looks like Trent Williams will be on this team going into the 2020 season. And then it's up to him whether or not he'll play or he'll just sit out another season. But he is a $14.5 million cap hit right now. And if the Redskins were to trade him, the Redskins will have at least $43 million worth of cap space. Worst case scenario. And then also, Ryan Kerrigan is an $11,687,500 cap hit right now. And I'm pretty sure the Redskins will either trade him, release him, or restructure him. It seems like restructuring him will be the best compromise for both parties. Ryan Kerrigan gets to stay on the team that he wants to stay on, break the sack record, which I believe he's literally only like one sack away from, and gets to retire a Redskin. And then the Redskins get a very good depth edge rusher for cheap on a very team friendly deal. So if the Redskins can turn Ryan Kerrigan's $11.7 million this year into maybe like three, four million dollars each year over the next few years, then the Redskins will gain like another seven million dollars worth of cap space, which would take them up to like 50 million dollars. And then Quinn Dunbar is a 4.4 million dollar cap hit right now, but he has no guaranteed money. So if he were to get hurt and everything, he would make no money in 2020. And he's also another trade candidate because he seems like a disgruntled employee right now. He says something to the extent of he's lost all respect for the Redskins organization or something like that on Twitter. So it's looking a little iffy as far as Quentin Dunbar goes. It would be nice if we could trade him and Trent Williams for a really good pick or a really good player and pick or something, but we'll see. But moving forward at the very worst case scenario with Trent Williams still on the team, Ryan Kerrigan not restructured, and Quentin Dunbar still on the team. And then after you add Thomas Davis and the other guys we just signed in free agency the past couple of days, the Redskins at worst have like $27 million worth of cap space. And I know you're not supposed to spend all your cap space immediately. You need to keep some space going into next year so that you can pay the next set of players that you need to get, whether it be re-signing or free agency like we're going through right now. But again, Alex Smith's 20 million is off the books after this year. So that's another 20 million they get in cap space next year. So we shouldn't worry about it too much. But the Redskins do need to figure out how they're going to re-sign Brandon Sheriff. Right now he's tagged and he's hitting the cap space for almost $15 million. If they can re-sign him, it may cost a little bit more money per year than what he's getting right now. Maybe it depends on how much they want him. So then we'll see how that affects the cap space. But going forward, looking at the holes that we still have in this team, the weaknesses, the positions that we still need filled in free agency, we're just gonna go forward with $27 million worth of cap space. Since Brandon Sheriff is technically on contract for the 2020 season under his tag. Well, the Redskins still have a big weakness a big hole at tight end. It would also be nice for them to go and get one of those veteran receivers out there to pair with Terry McLaurin. Offensive line is also a worry, especially tackle, with us expecting Trent Williams to leave some way or another. 
or just sit out if we end up not trading them. It would also be nice to go and get a veteran cornerback to add to the DB room. Also, free safety is interesting because we just signed Sean Davis and he'll compete with Monte Nicholson to see who starts but it would be nice to go and get somebody else if we can get them for very cheap. Edge rusher also exists. If you're assuming that we won't take Chase Young, if we may trade back or something, then that means we probably should go get an edge rusher in free agency, even though I prefer to get Chase Young over anything else. And then there's also running back, you know what I'm saying? It's not the biggest need at all. It's actually one of the least pressing needs because you have Darius Geis and Bryce Love with all of the potential in the world if they're healthy. And then you also have Adrian Peterson, who can easily play 16 games, very dependable, and get you a thousand yards if he's the primary running back. And then they just went and signed the Chris Thompson replacement and JD McKissick. And then there's also all of this quarterback controversy. All I care about is a backup quarterback. I don't want to bring anybody in that's even going to try to compete for the starting job. I want Dwayne Haskins as the starter of the future, point blank, period. No arguments. So let's go ahead and get into all of the available free agents out there for each position of need that we have. All right, so since tight end is the biggest need, I'm going to go ahead and talk about that. And after Eric Ebron just got signed to the Steelers, Jimmy Graham, even though I didn't want him, went to the Bears. Austin Hooper went to the Browns for more money than I was willing to give him. So I understand why he went there. The Redskins also probably didn't find him worth all of that money. And with the Redskins currently only having Jeremy Sprinkle, Hell Hinges, and recently signed Logan Thomas, who used to be a quarterback. So he's very athletic. He's one of those high ceiling, low floor guys, a project that the Redskins are trying to see if they can get the most out of him. He's also the person to hurt Ryan Kerrigan. So I'm still a little sour about that with him, but so we'll see how he can contribute on the team. But that tight end room is scary, unreliable. It's ridiculous. Jeremy Sprinkle, Butterfingers. Hell Hinges is very unproven. I mean, he looked nice in those last two games, but he also dropped a couple of passes. But he did show a lot of potential. And again, Logan Thomas is the most raw out of all of them. He was a quarterback coming out of college. So the Redskins need to figure something out. I mean, I'm going to go very in-depth with potential tight end fixes in the draft in that video I was talking about earlier that I'm going to come out with after this. But as far as free agency goes, there's still Tyler Eifert, who is Mr. Injury Prone. Last year, for the Bengals, he was a $4 million cap hit. If the Redskins end up getting him, they may just give him a veteran minimum because there's no way you can depend on him to be healthy. If you get him, you might as well just expect to not have him throughout the season. I mean, in 2016, he only started two games, played in eight. In 2017, he only played in two games, started in zero. In 2018, he played in four games, started in two. And in 2019, he played in all 16 games, but he only started four. And the Bengals don't just have George Kittle or Travis Kelsey or Zach Ertz on their team. So the fact that Tyler Eifer wasn't starting just basically shows that he's on a decline in his career. He's just too banged up. He did have some potential to him. He was a nice idea, but it just hasn't worked out. And then you have Titans tight end. That sounded weird. I've never said that before, but Delaney Walker, 35 years old, has played 13 seasons in the NFL. He made $4.8 million with the Titans last year in 2019. And I'm pretty sure if the Redskins were to get him, just like Tyler Eifert, he would probably go for the veteran minimum. But Delaney Walker would be more likely than Tyler Eifert to get more money than a veteran minimum. But I highly doubt he would get more than that four point eight million he made last year in a single year per year basis and injuries have definitely been a problem for him the past few years I mean age catches up to you but that also makes him cheaper for us like I just said I mean he's only played in eight games in the past two years <laughs> but when healthy he is dependable can block fairly well is a good receiving option and like I said he'll be very cheap he'll be a nice veteran presence great locker room guy no off the field issues none of that stuff I'll prefer him over Tyler Eifert any day even though even between Eric Ebron Delaney Walker and Tyler Eifert me personally I wanted none of those three but at least Eric Ebron even with his character issues and how injury prone he is when healthy he definitely has the most to offer on the field out of those three guys but if the Redskins were to bring in Delaney Walker for very cheap, he'll be a nice veteran presence for all of the young tight ends that we have on the roster already and the young tight end or tight ends that we may draft in this upcoming draft. And don't forget Donald Parham, who we had on our team last year on the practice squad during training camp and all of that type of stuff, looked pretty good in the XFL these past couple of months. So we may want to bring him back. Remember, he's huge. I mean, he's like 6'8". He should be fade route king. Big target for Dwayne Haskins. But we'll see though. Moving on from the tight ends, wide receivers. Terry McLaurin's great as an X receiver. Steven Sims is very good in the slot as we saw those last couple of games. 
Kelvin Harmon is developing, but we're not 100% sure about him just yet. Santana Moss said he hasn't even scratched the surface though, and that he can end up being a very good receiver. But we can't just depend on that. We cannot expect that to happen in 2020 or even anytime soon after that. So it would be nice to go and get another receiver, especially a veteran receiver, to bring in the pair with Terry McLaurin so that they just can't double team him all game. And you have Robbie Anderson, Emmanuel Sanders, Emmanuel Sanders. Rashad Perryman, and Josh Gordon is options out there and kind of AP. Josh Gordon and AB are very unlikely, but you know, they're technically options. Me personally, I prefer Robbie Anderson out of all the wide receivers that are available out there. Sadly though, the Redskins have shown minimal interest in Robbie Anderson and the entire NFL just period has shown very little interest in him. Robbie Anderson is currently seeking at least $10 million a year right now. The Jets, which is the team that he's been on, offered him less than that and right now, other NFL teams aren't even really showing real interest in him and clearly haven't offered him that $10 million a year that he wants. I'm definitely willing to take him for $10 million a year. I think Robbie Anderson has a lot to offer, especially with Terry McLaurin getting most of the attention. Robbie Anderson at 6'3", with almost Deshaun Jackson speed that can take the lid off the defense, and then Steven Sims in the slot, and Kelvin Harmon as a possession receiver? Come on now. That would be insane. And like I said, since he's 6'3", with his height, he can be the red zone threat also he can take the lid off the defense to bring what we thought Paul Richardson would bring and he can also be a red zone third and short threat which Dwayne Haskins needed very badly last year and he never had and 10 million a year isn't a lot of money I mean the Redskins just offered Amari Cooper 22 million a year and he drops the easy passes that man is one of the best route runners in the NFL but I definitely already knew I didn't want him because I already knew he was gonna be asking for too much money then the Redskins went and offered somebody that drops easy third down slants for no reason 22 million dollars a year but y'all not willing to go get Robbie Anderson maybe I'm tripping but I definitely prefer to go get Robbie Anderson over anybody that's available. He was my favorite wide receiver free agent target before free agency even started. The only reason I wanted him more than Stephon Diggs is because you had to give up so much to get him. You had to give up first round picks and all of that type of stuff. And then you also have Emmanuel Sanders. Robbie Anderson is only 26 years old, which is seven years younger. He's faster, taller, all of that. And then you also have Brashad Perryman, who is 26 years old, asking for $8.7 million a year. In my opinion, he's an okay receiver. He's cool. I don't dislike him. I don't think he's worth almost $9 million a year. But if we can get him very cheap, you know, that's a nice addition to bring into the wide receiver room. Nice little veteran presence. He's not one of them older, older guys, but just like Robbie Anderson, he's been here for a few years. So he could bring a little veteran presence to the wide receiver group. And then you have Devin Funches, who's 6'4", so he brings that red zone threat potential that I really want Dwayne Haskins to finally have. I don't like him anywhere near as much as I like Robbie Anderson, me personally, even though Robbie Anderson does have some weird off the field issues issues that I'm not going to dive into but I don't think it's anything to worry about if we were to get them but Devin Funches is 25 years old young 6'4 which is most important to me he was just a 10 million dollar cap hit against the Colts but he's also coming off a year where he only started one game I mean he hit the injured reserve like immediately for the Colts they didn't even really get to use him but before that injury he's mostly been a healthy player so that was probably just a fluke injury and I wouldn't tag him as injury prone but we do need to take note that he did only play one game last season. He was on the injured reserve after only starting in one game. And of course, like I said earlier, you still have Josh Gordon and AB who both have all the talent in the world. Easily both of them could be top five receivers in the NFL, but it comes with a lot of baggage. Me personally, I prefer to stay away from it, but you never know. The Redskins would have bring them in with this new regime that's so fascinated with culture and discipline and all of that. If there's any team that could get either of those two right, I believe it would be Ron Rivera and his coaching staff. And especially for Josh Gordon, his only problem was just weed. And now weed is basically legal in the NFL. I mean, and you saw with that late run that he had with the Seahawks that he still has a lot of talent and AB clearly still has all of the talent in the world to be a top receiver in this league but for me for my money Robbie Anderson for 10 million a year is my favorite option as far as free agents go fulfilling the wide receiver need that we still have but there's also a lot of great wide receivers in this coming draft. This is probably one of the deepest wide receiver classes of all time. So that's probably why people like Robbie Anderson don't have a huge market along with the running backs because you can just go get a younger guy for cheaper through the draft. But I'd still prefer to go and get Robbie Anderson. And now the offensive lineman. And in my opinion, it looks like Cornelius Lucas is gonna be that swing tackle offensive tackle depth 
that we hoped Jerron Christian could be. He's basically going to be the Ty Naseki replacement that we really needed last year. But at the same time, he started all 16 games for the Bears last season. So he may be here to replace Morgan Moses. We'll see. But then at the same time, it's pretty likely that Trent Williams will not be playing for the Redskins in 2020. Whether we trade him or he just sits out another year. So the Redskins do need to figure out what they're going to do for that left tackle position. And with the second overall pick in the draft more than likely being used for Chase young and us not having another draft pick to the third round we cannot expect to find somebody in the draft to replace trent williams so we should look to free agency now donald penn has said that he plans on not retiring and he is willing to come back for the redskins but i wouldn't want to depend on him starting at the left tackle position again we already saw what happened last year where he wasn't as bad as we probably expected him to be but we definitely miss trent williams a lot so some of the most notable names out there are kelvin beecham who played for the jets last year at 30 years old cameron fleming who played for the Giants last year, who was 27 years old. But neither of them are going to bring the level of talent at the left tackle position that we need, in my opinion. And the last notable name out there is Jason Peters. He is definitely the better of the three, easily, but he is 38 years old. And I'm pretty sure he still has something left in the tank, but he's definitely not a long-term answer. But it would be nice to get him maybe in a one, two year deal and then try to see if we can find a tackle in one of the later rounds in this upcoming draft. Or if we sign him for two years, we can wait to spend a first round pick maybe on a tackle in next year's draft, in the 2021 draft. Or if we trade Trent Williams, hopefully it's for a second round pick or better and we can draft an offensive tackle with a lot of potential in this 2020 draft and let Jason Peters start over him this year as the tackle that we draft gets ready to start the next year or whatever scenario like that. Just bring Jason Peters as the bridge tackle. I feel like he will be better on the field than Donald Penn, even though he is a little older. Spot track is estimating his annual market value at being almost $8 million, which is pretty high, especially for somebody that's 38 years old. But if the Redskins can get him for something cheaper, maybe like $5 million, that would be crazy. That would be a really good move for the Redskins. I mean, Donald Penn was like a $1.5 million cap hit last year, which is very cheap. But Jason Peters is obviously better. I, and I wouldn't mind paying him $5 million a year these next two years. But the ideal scenario for me would be to pay him $5 million this year. And that would give us another year to figure out how we're going to solve this left tackle problem. And that's all if we just don't end up keeping Trent Williams and he doesn't end up playing and then we just somehow magically end up extending him or something like that and it'll just be a dream come true scenario for all of us now moving on to corner and I'm not about to dive into all of these names because there's so many of them I'm just gonna dive into the few that are most notable, especially the ones that I want the most. So just reading off the list, there's Bashad Breeland. Bringing him back would be crazy. Nikhil Robbie Coleman. He is fine in Superstar KO. He has his moments when he's terrible. He can lose you the game or win you the game. If you run with the Lil Yachty team and Superstar KO and Madden, that would Robbie Coleman be making plays. I'm not gonna hold you. Then you also have Brian Poole from the Jets, but he's a slot corner. We already have that role filled up with Kendall Fuller. You have Eli Apple, who's actually fairly talented. You have Logan Ryan. You have Jimmy Smith from the Ravens, who's one of the most talented corners available easily, but he's getting up there in age. And he was also hurt last year a lot. Then you have Xavier Rhodes, who's way too old for me. I've had a few people ask me if I would like to take a chance on Xavier Rhodes for cheap. But to me, even just giving him the vet minimum, I prefer to have him as a coach than to have him as a player. I feel like he's just way too far past his prime. He was one of the best corners in the league just a few years ago, but I feel like watching what he did last year, I think it's over with for him. I feel like we have a better chance of getting Dominique Rogers Cromartie to work out in some way, especially with how versatile he is over Xavier Rhodes. Then you also have Ronald Darby and Prince of Mukamara. So for me personally, out of this group, I prefer Bashad Breeland the most, bringing him back to Washington where he used to play for, along with Kendall Fuller who we already brought back, and them both of them just got a ring with the Chiefs would be crazy. And you already know that Ron Rivera had interest in him. When he left us, he went to go sign with the Panthers and it looked like the deal was almost done, but then he failed the physical because of something stupid, like he got a splinter and an infection or something like that. It wasn't because of like his athletic ability or anything or his condition and it was some type of like injury or something. So he failed the Panthers physical and that's the only reason Ron Rivera didn't have him in Carolina and he ended up reuniting with Kendall Fuller in Kansas City and getting a ring. So I'm very surprised that we haven't gone for Bashad Breeland right now. 
He's still a good outside corner. He was more consistent than Kendall Fuller was for the Chiefs last year. He's one of the main reasons their defense had a big turnaround last year. Him and Tyron Matthew, and he had a good game in the Super Bowl. He had himself an interception and everything. And also, he was very cheap. He was only a $1.2 million cap hit for the Chiefs last year. We could probably sign him to something relatively long term, like three, four years for something similar to that. Maybe like $4 million a year, and that would be a crazy deal. Especially compared to like a James Bradbury who's getting 15 million a year who I wanted but definitely not for no 15 million a year I feel like Brashad Breeland is pretty much just as good as him and we can probably get him for like 4 million a year I mean offer him 7 million a year I'm pretty sure he'll definitely take it but I don't even think we will have to pay him that much and Bashad Breeland has publicly expressed interest in playing for the Redskins I mean he said literally quote that would be fire bring back that 2015 team when we won the division. So Bashad Breeland clearly wants to reunite with Fuller in DC. Me personally, I'm confused why this deal hasn't even happened. I'm pretty sure he's not asking for a lot of money per year. And we could definitely use more corners, especially with Quentin Dunbar, who looks like he's only playing just because he's on contract. He's basically about to just play this year out, report to camp, do what he's got to do, and leave next year as soon as he's off the contract and try to go get a bigger contract with another team. Because, I mean, even with Quentin Dunbar and Kendall Fuller and Fabian Moreau and Jimmy Moreland, I still want Bashad Breeland. Breeland. But Quinn Dunbar, who's our most proven cornerback right now, who can't stay healthy, looks like he may not be here, especially 2021 and beyond. But he may not even be here 2020 if he just decides to hold out with that zero guaranteed money he's getting this year. I mean, that's crazy. If he doesn't play a game, he gets no money. I mean, that's insane. And now another position to need that we have, kinda, free safety. They brought in Sean Davis, who's an athletic freak, paying him cheap money at least. He's one of those super up and down guys. All of the potential in the world with all of that athleticism he has. He's even more athletic than Monte Nicholson, who looked like a bright, young, very rangy star in his rookie season when we drafted him. He's just inconsistent. But I feel like if anybody can get consistency out of him, it's Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera. So this free safety competition with him and Monte Nicholson is going to be crazy during training camp and I'm just assuming that Trey Apke is never going to fully develop into a true free safety that we can depend on he's probably one of the fastest players on our roster but at this point he looks like a strong special teams contributor that I hope we keep for a long time but just mostly for special teams purposes and the thing I like most about this competition between those two is that we're only paying both of them combined less than eight million dollars this year Monte Nicholson is on his last year so he has a lot to prove and we signed Sean Davis Davis to a one-year prove-it deal, so he has to go out there and play his heart out well enough to earn his next contract, which is when he'll hope to get his big payday. So we'll have two people playing their hearts out, battling against each other in training camp, and whoever wins is going to play their heart out throughout the season for their next contract. And like I said, if anybody can get the most out of them, it's Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera, especially with us switching to a 4-3 style of defense and in the Jack Del Rio system where the free safety does free safety things. He does not have to worry about coming down in the box and doing things he doesn't like to do which is hit tackle and all of that whichever one wins the battle will be able to just use their crazy athleticism and range to just roam the deep end which is what they do best putting them in the best positions to succeed but at the same time who knows if either of them will work out so as far as free safeties go and free agency that's available you still have Demarius Randall it would have been nice to go get a Trey Boston or Anthony Harris or a Justin Simmons but with franchise tags and other teams being more aggressive than us in free agency we ended up with this battle between Sean Davis and Monte Nicholson. And honestly, if the Redskins don't bring back DeShazer Everett, Von Bell would be a nice backup strong safety option to put behind Landon Collins. And he's only 25 years old. And Demarius Randall would be a nice extra piece to add to the free safety competition if we wanted to. Both of them are possibly going for very cheap, especially Von Bell, whose spot track says that his market value may only be $4.5 million annually. We may even be able to get him for cheaper than that, especially since this much time in free agency has passed. And clearly, since he hasn't been signed yet, he doesn't have much of a market. So he'll be willing to sign for cheaper than what people probably expected. And the second to last position of need is running back, maybe, you know what I'm saying? We have a deep running back group that's built on both potential between Bryce Love and Darius Geis, who both have Pro Bowl, All-Pro talent if they're healthy. And then we also have dependability between Adrian Peterson and J.D. McKissick, who's basically the Chris Thompson replacement. 
So if for some reason Bryce Love and Darius Geis are hurt, we still have Adrian Peterson as the three down back and JD McKissick as the third down back as a one two punch. So I wouldn't say running back is a big need. We could just go out and get one very late in the draft, like seventh round, or maybe as an undrafted free agent to add to the room during training camp. But after Todd Gurley went back to the Falcons, which I'm so happy to see, cause you know, I'm a Georgia boy. That's been my boy since we recruited him to Georgia. I hate the Falcons though. So don't, don't put me with them, but I'm just happy to see him back in Georgia basically. And then Melvin Gordon went to the Broncos to give a one-two punch with Philip Lindsay. Right now, you just have Devontae Freeman out here in limbo looking for a possible slot. I mean, it would be nice for the Bills to get him to pair up with Devin Singletary as a one-two punch. But if Devontae Freeman is willing to take a very cheap contract, which I highly doubt, it would be nice to add him to the running back room. But again, I highly doubt this will happen. I give it like a less than 5% chance, like maybe even less than 1%. Cause I'm pretty sure he's out there waiting this long so he can try to get a bigger contract than what people are offering him currently. He may wait to get signed till after the draft to see which teams still need running backs, especially a starting caliber one like him. And then you have the quarterbacks. For me, backup quarterbacks. I don't want anybody in the way of Dwayne Haskins. It would be nice to bring in somebody that's at least decent to good to put some pressure on Dwayne Haskins, but I don't want an actual full-fledged QB competition. I want Dwayne Haskins to be the starter and us to go get a quarterback to be his certified backup. Colt McCoy went to the Giants. Case Keenum actually got more money than I expected, went to the Browns to be the backup behind Baker Mayfield. So that's where our backup quarterbacks went. Josh Johnson from 2018 is in the XFL. I'm pretty sure he's looking for a backup job. I would love to bring him in. He actually looked pretty good in my opinion. I mean, he folded in the Tennessee game, but you can tell that was mostly just a product of not being fully prepared, not knowing the offense. 90% of the offense was injured. I mean, he was working with the worst offensive line probably in Redskins history because we were just signing guys off the street. He didn't have Terry McLaurin as a receiver. He had Josh Doxson and injured Paul Richardson. I mean, it was a struggle for him. So when he got out of that offense, I was just surprised. So I would love to bring him in as a backup. Then you also have Jameis Winston, who's out of a job right now. I'm personally against Jameis Winston, unless he's willing to come in for extremely cheap and he knows for a fact that he is the backup. He's not trying to start. So don't come in here bringing all kind of locker room issues if you don't end up starting. Same with Cam Newton. My my favorite player in the NFL, Southwest Atlanta, Westlake, you feel me? I want him personally to go somewhere and get a ring. I would love it if he went to go play for the Chargers or the Patriots and get himself a ring. I want him starting somewhere. So it would hurt my soul as much as I love watching him and I would love to see him in a Redskin jersey. It would hurt my soul to bring him over and have him as a backup. Like I said, I want Dwayne Haskins starting for the future. I believe in him. I've seen so much potential in him and I believe he can easily become a top 10 quarterback in this league. With the arm talent, he has if y'all really really watch his film you can see that Dwayne Haskins can really be it for us we can finally have some longevity at quarterback which we didn't even necessarily have when we were winning Super Bowls he can finally be a quarterback that we have starting for us for like the next 12 15 years we'll see though but getting back to the backup quarterbacks that's why I don't want Cam Newton and that's why I'm iffy on Jameis Winston how it would affect Dwayne Haskins. But one of my favorite, very underrated options out there is Matt Moore. I know he's 35 years old, but the way he played when Pat Mahomes was hurt was actually pretty good. The Chiefs offense, of course, without Pat Mahomes, it looked different. It wasn't the same, but Matt Moore went out there and did his thing. Their offense was still running smoothly. So he's still a good quality backup out there. And he was only a $645,000 cap hit last year, less than a million. We can probably get him for something very similar. And I prefer to have somebody veteran and seasoned like him, who we just recently saw last year play some good games. Definitely good enough to win, especially with their defense not being anywhere near as good as I expect our 2020 Redskins defense to be. He can definitely still win you games in this NFL. So I prefer to have him over some late round drafted quarterback or some undrafted free agent, some young guy that has no NFL experience. And if we would have for some reason have to throw him in there, he would just crumble under pressure more than likely. I mean, you never know. We can go get my Georgia boy, Jake Fromm, who I feel like is going to just be a career backup. But that's only if he's like available in the sixth or seventh round or as an undrafted free agent. I'm not about to spend a fifth round pick or higher on Jake Fromm. I prefer to spend my picks on cornerbacks, wide receivers, tight end, offensive line, all of that type of stuff. That's one of the main reasons why I prefer to go get Matt Moore. And yeah, that's basically all that's available, notable name-wise, in free agency. I mean, of course... 
as far as quarterbacks go, you still have Joe Flacco out there, but I'm good on Joe Flacco, me personally. He's probably asking for way more money than Matt Moore. And then I've also seen people say we can trade for Josh Rosen from the Dolphins. He's probably going for cheap, but at the same time, he probably wants to start somewhere, so that would also cause controversy. But at the end of the day, those are all of the free agent options for the positions of need that we have. Like I said, at the very, very worst, we have like $28 million worth of cap space right now going forward. And it would be very possible to sign Robbie Coleman to help our wide receiver problem, Jason Peters to be our bridge tackle, and Bashad Breeland at corner. We could sign all three of them and be good on cap space. And all three of them will be very impactful players for us. Robbie Anderson and Jason Peters obviously is impact starters. And Bashad Breeland will have a very strong case at starting opposite of Quentin Dunbar. Or maybe instead of Quentin Dunbar, if Quentin Dunbar doesn't want to play for us this year. So with that $28 million, my dream scenario would be Robbie Anderson as our wide receiver two, Jason Peters as our starting left tackle, Matt Moore, and Bashad Breeland as our starting cornerback opposite of Dunbar. I didn't really talk about edge like that because Jadavion is pretty much all this out there. He's asking for 20 mil a year. Yannick Ngakwe is asking for pretty much 20 million a year and you would have to trade for him you'll probably have to give up like a first round pick or something and then everson griffin even as as great he's been during his career he's 32 years old and he may even be asking for quite a bit of money so that's why edge rusher and especially with me expecting us to draft chase young second overall and wanting us to draft him second overall there's no point in really even diving into free agents we already have a lot of depth with ryan kerrigan and recently re-signed nate orchard off the bench that is crazy and the only reason i don't mention ryan anderson is part of that because i want him starting at sam linebacker but yeah man i can easily see a scenario where we could sign robbie anderson jason peters bashad breeland and still even possibly have enough money to bring in just delaney walker on a veteran minimum just to provide some type of veteran presence for the tight end group because we're about to have a lot of young guns hell hinges jeremy sprinkle and maybe one or two tight ends that we draft in this upcoming draft so it would be really nice to have some sort of a veteran presence but yeah man that's the salary cap that the redskins have going forward as of today friday march 20th and those are the available free agents that's still out there and I just told y'all my ideal scenario, my dream case scenario for the free agents that we would sign if a kind of how much we could sign them for. And like I said early in the beginning of this video, I'm working on a video talking about the best tight ends available in the draft. And as far as our needs go, I'm gonna do one position per video for each need that we have. I'm gonna talk about the best players available at that position in this upcoming draft. So I'm coming out with this tight end one first. Then I'm gonna talk about the receivers, the offensive linemen, the cornerbacks, the safeties, maybe the running backs and maybe the quarterbacks. We'll see when we get there. But I'm definitely doing the tight ends next because that's the most important. That's our biggest draft need right now, period. But make sure you like this video if you liked it. If you learned anything, please subscribe if you haven't. Get ready for all of these videos I'm about to spam y'all with. I'm also about to get in them comments like I promised. Just been very busy working on this video and all kinds of other stuff. So I will be getting in them comments for my previous videos like I promised. And I will be getting in the comments for this video. So make sure y'all get in them comments. Let me know how y'all feel about the Redskins free agency so far. And who's still out there that y'all want. And I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.